let's have a look let's have a look now at the relationship between the input in the production and the output that we want to get and we will introduce the concept that we discussed a couple of videos ago of isoquant i noted here like iq this is the first iq the first isoquant we're discussing at the moment and here it is this orange line and we can see that it is below the iso cost line now what does that mean let's give some numbers that we'll understand for instance at this level at this level we are using let's say three units of labor and four units of capital the three units of labor and four units of capital give us a certain production let's say that quantity that we are producing is equal to 11 11 units now we can clearly see that the budget line the iso cost line allows us to invest more in labor and capital and of course if we invest more in labor and capital we can also produce more let's suppose we go we go higher on the budget line on the budget line let's say now we are going to produce with three units of labor but we're going to use we're going to use seven units of capital with more capital we'll be able to produce more meaning but that the actual production will go higher so we will move the iso quant up We'll move the isoquant over here and we can see that the isoquant now, the second isoquant, IQ2, is tangent to the iso cost at this specific point. Now recall that this is very similar to the relationship between the consumer behavior where we had the tangency between the indifference curve and the budget line. The maximizing level of utility that happens to be on the capacity of the consumer, on the budget that the consumer allows. So the same goes here. We want the maximum production given that we can afford it. And in this case, the ISO cost touches that specific, that specific ISO quant, meaning that the money that we can invest in capital and labor allows us to produce that much more. And let's say in that case, the ISO quant 2 would be corresponding to a production, would be corresponding to a production of 14 units. So clearly we're producing more, we can sell it on the market we make more money that's what we're looking for as a firm as a company that's the whole intuition here the optimal point the best that we can do will be at this tangency because even if we want to produce more let's say we go on a higher iso quant we would like this combination of capital and labor to produce more which would be let's say a production of 17 units the thing is we cannot afford it anymore we cannot afford this level of let's say five units of labor and eight units of capital we can't afford it although we would like it we cannot have uh, the money for it so we will stop at the point where we can actually afford it now let's work out the math over here what happens at this tangency point recall that the tangent line tangent line to the iso quant we discussed it in in a couple of videos ago we're gonna touch on it at the moment that's going to be the ratio between the marginal productivity with respect to labor divided by the marginal productivity with respect to capital. Why is that the case? Because the slope, the slope of the tangent line over here shows us how much capital we have to sacrifice, how much capital we have to sacrifice to get one more unit of labor. And since we get one more unit of labor, we are increasing our productivity by that specific amount. We get an additional productivity, an additional output with respect to increasing that labor relative to giving up some productivity that we could have had from capital. So we give up this opportunity. We give up the production that we could have if we invested in capital, but instead we chose to invest in the labor. Now, we said that we are giving up something in exchange for something else. We're giving up uh, capital in exchange for labor, meaning that we are paying for the labor to hire that one more employee and we're giving up some interest that we could invest in capital. So what we're having is that we are going, we are going to pay an additional wage for that, for that employee, but we're giving up the interest that we could have invested in the capital. And now if we make this cross product if we make the cross product over here we will see that we will have the relationship which is marginal product with respect to labor divided by the wage must equal to the marginal product with respect to capital divided by the interest now we consider this equation again very similar to what we had in the consumer behavior question where we had for instance marginal utility with respect to apples divided by the price to apples was equal to the marginal utility with respect to the bananas divided by the price of the bananas. What this means is that at the optimal point when we allocate resources in such a way that we cannot do any better is the point where we become indifferent between the allocation because we are getting the most production relative to the cost, relative to the wage 
for the labor in the same way that we're getting the most uh, for the capital by paying the interest on it relative to the cost of capital. So if we had, for instance, that the labor was more productive, let's say we would pay the wage and we would get more output out of that, it's wiser to invest more in the labor and less in the capital. And by the same logic, if the capital was more productive relative to the labor, it was wise to invest more in the capital and less in the labor. And we will keep investing, we will keep allocating the resources at the point of the indifference where we just cannot do any better. And that happens to be the optimal input combination. That happens to be the golden rule, so to speak, of allocating labor and capital in the context of a firm. Hope this makes sense and we are done.